Buenos dias, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin Family YouTube channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi Tayutu. And guys, today I'm getting goosebumps. We have the most exciting guest ever on the Bitcoin Family YouTube channel. You all know this guy. He's one of the biggest people in the industry, Carl the Moon. He is going to show us today the road to the moon, how Bitcoin is going to go to the moon. Uh, Carl, I'm so happy. I hope you can shortly share your story, how you became Carl the Moon and, 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 and how the market is going to moon. That is why I invited you to my channel. Thank you for being here. Uh, please take over, Carl, and lead us the way into this beautiful space shuttle onto the moon. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on the channel. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been in the space for a few years. Um, I jumped in uh, slightly after you jumped in back in 2017. And, um, yeah, I have my, uh, my YouTube channel. And, um, yeah, I mean, what I do is the charts. So, so I think your audience would love to see maybe where the price is going. So uh, let's maybe jump straight into the chart, uh, charts and take a look at the short term and the kind of the medium term to get a sense of, the direction here. So let's go right into the charts. All right, so here we have the Bitcoin price and we can see that um, Bitcoin did break above the all time high here and we saw a big green candle. However, the Bitcoin price came um, today back down below this all time high, which is of course a, um, a, um, a bad sign. It's a sign that the, the bulls are not able to keep above the all time high. Because remember, last time we broke above the all-time high, back here, when we broke above 41,000, we saw a big candle, and then the price continued to go up. And if we go even uh, further back, since back here, when we broke the $20,000 level, we broke above the all-time high, and once again, we just saw a huge move to the upside. So this time, when we broke the all-time high, we came straight back below the all-time high again. So this is indeed a sign of weakness in the short term, showing us that maybe, maybe um, the bears are starting to come back in um, into the price. So we have to uh, pay attention to the short term trends. And that's what I want to do now. Let's go into the, um, the daily time frame. And I want to bring out something that is called the EMA ribbon. This here is the uh, EMA ribbon. It is basically a, um, a band of uh, exponential moving averages. And it is the 55 EMA to the 20 EMA all put together creating this uh, ribbon. And, and long story short here, when we are above the ribbon, we're in a bull trend. When we are below the ribbon, we are in a bear trend. So what we can see here on the daily time frame is that we are clearly still in a in an uptrend, we're in a bullish trend because we're bouncing off of the support here, bouncing off of the support here, and we're still way above this ribbon. Um, the point where we would have to flip bearish on the daily time frame is when we break the ribbon, which would be down here at $46,000 approximately. So what I'm saying here is that we could see a uh, big correction. We could actually go all the way down, almost 20% from where we are right now, and still remain bullish on the daily time frame. So that's the first thing that I think we should um, know about. Going into the four hour time frame, we can see that um, today we saw a, a correction, we saw a dump. And um, what we can see is that we, so far, we got supported by the four hour ribbon. Now, if we were to uh, break the four hour ribbon, just like we saw back here, then this could indeed lead to a bigger correction. And last time we broke the ribbon here on the four hour, we saw a correction of approximately 17%. So if we were to close below here, then we could maybe see something similar where we go down potentially uh, again, then down to maybe $45,000, $46,000. Um, but like I said, that would still remain bullish on the daily. But on the four hour, on the four hour, if we go below the ribbon, we would enter into a bear trend on the four hour time frame, just like we saw here. That was a bear trend. Now, uh, we can go into the one hour as well and take a look at the, the immediate short term because 
in the past few days here, we have seen the Bitcoin price being in a bull trend. We've been bouncing off of the support. You can see very clearly here how, how the, the ribbon has been keeping us afloat. But right here, at 59,000, we broke the one hour. And as soon as we broke it decisively, we saw a uh, pretty substantial dump here. And um, as, we are, as we are recording this, we've seen at least like a 3.5% dump. And to the, um, to the bottom there, it was actually 7% dump. So um, quite, quite, um, quite a big dump, to be honest. The summary here is that on the one hour, we are bearish. On the four hour, however, we are still bullish as long as we're above the ribbon. And on the daily we are still also bullish because we're above the ribbon. Now, uh, we can also go out to the weekly while we're already at it. And we can see that we are extremely bullish on the weekly. It, it's, um, it looks even ridiculous because we're so far, far away from the ribbon. Uh, it almost makes no sense to look at the weekly time frame. Now that you um, have the, the daily and the weekly call, can I ask you something? Because like 2017, yeah. we had like six like small runs with six crashes in total. I think we have now seen four crashes during this bull run. Um, so do you expect that this next one could be the same, like the fifth crash in this bull run of 30% that we pull back? I think that the, the 2017 bull run doesn't necessarily look exactly like, like this one. Uh, but if we were to um, go back to, uh, let, let's see if we can pull, pull up the previous bull run slide a little bit faster. So we go back to 2017 and we can see that uh, we had two, uh, two bumps here. We had this one and then this one with two corrections. We can see that from this, uh, this bump, we saw a massive run up 400% up to $20,000. So what if these two bumps here that we saw in 2017, what if these two are these two bumps that we're seeing right now, this bump and this bump? Well, we could play with the numbers a little bit. Let's say we were to see a 400% um, a, a rise from here. Anything is possible in Bitcoin, right? Let's, in that case, we have to zoom out quite, uh, quite um, massively here. But that could put Bitcoin ads potentially something like this. Let's see here. Uh, Bitcoin now they really look like bumps. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So this could put Bitcoin up to like $300,000. Um, and uh, that, would, um, that would line up actually quite nicely with the, the 2017 run where we saw um, essentially uh, two bumps like this and then the price just went absolutely exponential. So uh, I think that previous price action would suggest that Bitcoin can definitely go much, much higher than where we are right now. The question is, are we going to see some kind of correction here before we start heading higher? And I think that's possible. I think that's possible. But the levels that I'm watching in terms of a big correction are, like I said, the bottom of the ribbon, 46,000, but also this level right here, 41,000, because 41,000 is this previous big resistance right there. I think this is a very important level to watch. If we break 41K, in my opinion, we could see uh, something like um, maybe down to 30,000 again. Uh, but so far, of course, we're a long way from that uh, happening. But um, being on the daily time frame here, we can quickly just bring out the uh, RSI because in the RSI, I want to show you that if we were to break the daily uptrend, then we do have something um, scary in the chart, and that is this bearish divergence. You can see here, this is a bearish divergence when we have the, um, the RSI, the re relative strength index, and the price diverging from each other. They are going different directions. So we have a high and a higher high in the price, but in the RSI, we have a high and a lower high. And this is a so-called... Um, or at least I call it a triple bearish divergence because we have three points in the price that are all higher. But in the RSI, we have three corresponding uh, highs that are all lower. So a triple bearish divergence. And well, this could be a sign of a weakness from the bulls showing us that we are running out of momentum. We're running out of steam here and we might need some kind of consolidation, maybe go sideways for a while before we head higher. Or maybe if we're bearish, actually um, a, a bigger correction, maybe down to forty or $30,000. So that is something that I'm seeing in the chart right now. But like I said, as long as we're in the bull trend, there is no point in uh, getting all too um, scared. But if we do break the daily uptrend, then we have to pay attention to this bearish sign, in my opinion. Amazing. Um, Carl, 
you know, I love the way how you explain these charts. I've been watching your videos as well um, for years already. You know, how do you do it? And I, I, I really like your TA. Um, so my biggest question is, we all have our stories. We all got into crypto for a reason. We all built up this small business out of crypto, this lifestyle out of crypto. We all have so many followers. You know, I only have 20K. You have more than 300,000 followers. And we are growing daily. More and more new people will enter the market. What would your advice be to those people that want to start and live this decentralized lifestyle by using the tools of trading, you know, that they can monetize their life with a laptop and just trade? I always get these questions like, oh, should we trade the 15 minute, the four hour? The... So what is your advice? If, if people would ask to, to you, Carl, how can I start to live this life and just trade a little bit and, you know, make a beautiful life out of trading? Yeah, if you want to trade, I think that you have to um, be aware of the fact that um, it's not easy in the beginning. You have to kind of go through uh, many weeks and months of trial and error and, uh, and putting in the hours to, to understand how charts work. Uh, but it's definitely possible. And I think that um, you have to learn um, basic risk management. I think that's very important when you start out. Some people, they will deposit um, some, some money and then they will use all of that money for one position and when they lose that position, they lose their whole account. Uh, when you put in money in your trading account, first of all, it should be very small compared to your whole portfolio. It should be uh, what you can afford to lose because let's be honest, if you're a beginner, the risk of losing your money in the beginning is very high. Um, it takes some time before you can start learning how to be profitable. So the first initial deposit should be very small deposits, uh, probably somewhere between 1% to 5% of your, your, your Bitcoin. And every single trade from this trading account should be not more than maybe 1% to 3% of your whole trading account. So, uh, And some people might, might say, oh, but that's boring. How can I make money from this? Well, in the beginning, you have to learn. And in the beginning, um, you will lose many trades. So the, the lower the, the position or the smaller the position, the, the less costly your lessons will be. But eventually you will learn, you will get profitable and you can start increasing your, your position sizes. Uh, that's very important. And other than that, I just think it's very important to, um, to stay up to date with the market. Watch me every day, watch Didi every day. Um, stay up to date to what's happening. Know what's, uh, like you have to know the industry you're in. Research and, um, and understand Bitcoin. I think it's very important to understand Bitcoin. Uh, but... Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of the most important thing I would say. And people say that 80% of all traders lose money and are non-profitable. And it's probably true. And that's why you have to, you have to be like, a, you have to have the winner's mindset because 80% of all businesses fail. 80% of all people that start a diet, they eventually give up. 80% of everyone who, um, who goes to the gym, they will eventually just uh, give up as well. Most people that do anything, they will actually fail because they are, they're not winners up here. You have to have the winner's mindset. And to be part of this 20%, you just have to decide that you, you are this winner, that you, are, that you believe in yourself. So I think that um, people give up too easily and people, they don't care enough. If you want to be a trader, you have to care and you have to treat it as a serious business because it is. I completely agree with you. I think that's a winner mindset that we all have because else you, we would not be like surviving those bear markets, those crashes, those emotional roller coaster rides uh, that we had since 2017, even 2013, you know. Um, um, but, that, but again, you see so many people getting and seeing the life we are living and we are living it because of Bitcoin. So it's completely possible. And, and I do, you know, guys, I've been watching Carl's videos for many times and uh, you know, if you look at the comments below his videos, you can see so many people making profits because of the calls, not calls, not financial advice, but, you know, he's showing how he is trading and you can just copy his trades if you believe it. You follow the craftsmen in the industry, people that have the experience. That's how you uh, pretend to be learning when you go to school, because there is a teacher that teaches you something about life. Um, this is what we do on YouTube. That is why it's called social media. We, we are social entrepreneurs taking all the time to social educate people on, on trading. I think Carl is doing an amazing job. Um, I think that's, uh, I, I think you answered that really perfectly, Carl. Um, of course, I need to ask you, I need to ask you, what is your target for the end of this year? What is your target um, for the end of this bull run? And what do you think that the next bottom will be after that we reach that huge target? 
I think by the end of this year, we have at least touched 200,000 before the end of this year. And I think that we could go as high as maybe $700,000 before the end of this year uh, because we're seeing so much money printing. We're seeing so much, uh, like every, institutions are jumping in. The mainstream is jumping in. Elon Musk bought Bitcoin, Tesla is in. We're going to see more and more of this happen. And it's kind of, it's like the perfect storm for Bitcoin. And um, I have previously said that $100,000 is my target for this year. And we're so close now that it's a boring target. We're obviously going to reach 100000 obviously. So uh, we need to up our targets. And I think that seeing what's happening right now around the world, something like 700 k would surprise many people. And that's the whole point. You won't see the, uh, the, the most obvious scenario. And if everyone says 100 k or 200 k then we're we're probably going to do one of two things. Either we're going to dump from here, we're going to go back down to 20K and we're going to do the un or the unexpected, which would be a huge bear market here. Or we're going to go much, much higher than people expect, which would be, yeah, five hundred dollars to $700,000 before the end of the year. And I'm bullish. I'm not bearish. So I believe in the bullish scenario here. So that's how, how, um, how I view this. And if we reach something like 500K to 700K, then I believe we're going to see just an, uh, just as big of a bear market as, we, as, as we've seen before. We will see like an 80 to 90% correction and we will come down to, um, to yeah, close to where we are right now, honestly. We, we might come down and touch very close to where we are now in the next bear market. So um, that's, that's my, my gut feeling right now. Wow, guys, you, you heard it here on the Bitcoin family, 700K, that could be a really cool option. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. There's so much bullishness in the market. I, I am staying bull as well. I can believe it. You know, people always don't believe at the beginning of a bull market that we go times uh, 10, 20, 30. You know, the first bull market, guys, after the halving, we went times 90. The second bull market, after the halving, we went times 30. The, the, this current bull market you will see on this chart, you can see that the Y line is exactly in between the 30 and 90 times. So yes, this number that Carl is telling us is not a strange number. If we go times 60 after the halving, um, 60, the halving was around 8 to 10K, we would be going to 600K. This is all possible in Bitcoin and Bitcoin always makes the strangest moves. Carl, I'm so thankful you took the time to come on our channel, The Bitcoin Family. It's a honor for me. It's a honor for our viewers. They all love your channel. I think most of my viewers also, of course, subscribe to your channel already. If you haven't subscribed yet to Carl's channel, please do so. Because, you know, I know he has 300,000, but he deserves 500,000 viewers because he's kicking out kick-ass media every day for all of you. And I know how much time this costs in our lives every day again to keep educating guys. And, and, you know, we are doing good for the community and we hope the community does good for us by giving this video a thumbs up. I hope you share the video with all your friends and family. Um, uh, please leave a comment. If you have any other questions to call, please leave a comment. And I hope that Carl takes the time to answer the questions. Carl, is there anything else you want to add to this video today? Um, what I want to add in this video is I want to just tell everyone out there to just hold your Bitcoin for the future and, uh, and make sure that uh, you, you hold them very, very hard. Many people, they, they do the stupid mistake of selling at the, the wrong moment. They panic sell. Obviously, taking profits in the bull market is reasonable, but I would never, personally, never sell all of my Bitcoin. Never. Um, I might take 5 to 10% profits uh, towards the end of this bull cycle, but that's it. That's it. The rest I'm going to hold for the next 10, 20 years uh, because uh, when Bitcoin goes to millions and millions of dollars per Bitcoin, you will thank me. Yep. Completely agree. Huddle, huddle, huddle. That's what we need to do. And, and when you're huddling, guys, always remember to zoom out in Bitcoin and to zoom in and like try to enjoy every single minute of the day, just like Carl and I am doing, living the life to the fullest, because that is exactly what life should be about. And you can do this very beautiful while you huddle your Bitcoins. Thanks again, Carl. And hopefully meet again soon in Bali, Dubai, Copangan, wherever on this beautiful world. And thanks and respect to you. Thank you.